Millions of U.S. citizens vote on Tuesday in a presidential election defined by uncertainty, with Kamala Harris and Donald Trump awaiting the outcome of a desperately close and hugely consequential race. Tens of millions of voters were expected to cast their ballots on Tuesday on top of the 83 million who have already voted early, and both candidates put in a final word to try to sway the last undecided voters. Harris, who had already voted by mail, told Atlanta station that it it is a fair election and people need to get out and be active in voting day. Meanwhile, Trump, who voted in Florida near his Mar-a-Lago residence, said he felt very confident and that he wanted to be very inclusive. Either winner will make history marking the first woman elected president or the second president to be elected to do non-consecutive terms. And to know all the details info and latest information on this election day in the U.S., we contact Carlos Montero, Telesus Special Envoy to Washington. Hi, Carlos. What can you share with us at this hour? Hi, Alejandra. You can hear right now behind me people here in the Capitol are going home. They are going to watch TV. They are going to wait the first exit poll that we should know anytime uh, soon. But you were talking before about the last-minute effort of the two candidates to get the undecided to vote for them. To give you an idea, Kamala Harris surprised today many people when she was in one of the headquarters of the Democrat Party here in Washington, answered the phone, talking to people, trying to convince them to vote for the Democrat Party. That was really something interesting to see how the Democrat Party and the Republicans are trying to go house by house, trying to convince people. Also, if you have a phone registered here in the USA, you get thousands of text messages recommending you to vote for a candidate. That's going to be over very soon. Seven o'clock, they are going to close the polls in most of the east coast of the USA, and we are going to start to know the exit poll, but it's going to be a long night so far. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen. There is a lot of concern that Donald Trump uh, would not accept the result. That's nothing new because it happened in 2020 when he lost against Joe Biden, that he didn't accept the result. And we know what's happened January 6, when the Congress that's behind me was going to validate the official result. He said this morning that he's convinced when he went to vote that the American vote are going to vote for him. I don't know if that's going to happen. What I do know that all the polls that show a very tight race could go either way. There are seven states that are going to be very important and we have to pay attention to them. Pennsylvania, the two candidates were there yesterday, one of them. North Carolina, Trump was uh, there. Georgia, as another of the state. Arizona. But let's talk about Pennsylvania, why it's so important. That's the place that uh, Kamala Harris decided to close. The one who wins, uh, Pennsylvania is going to take the 19 electoral vote. Those are called swing states. They could go either blue or either red. And what they are trying to do today is to try to convince them to see if they can get the vote. Here, it's not going to win the person who's going to get the most votes. It's going to get the person you have, when you follow or coverage, remember this number, 270. 270 is the number of electoral votes that the candidates need to win the election. It doesn't matter if you have more a uh, number of vote, people voting for you than the other candidates. If you reach the 270 electoral vote, you are the winner. Who is going to be the winner? We don't know. What I do know, we are going to be here broadcasting for our special in Telesur Español. Also, Telesur English, we're going to be talking to you guys. But so far, it's a waiting game. Let's see what's happening in the next minutes when we start to know the first exit poll. Just to finish, before going back to you, I want to tell you it was a pretty normal 
Uh, day to day, there were not very incidents, big incidents in Pennsylvania. The one of the district, they have many districts, there were some problems with the software, so they are going to extend the hours to vote until uh, nine o'clock. But it's a minimum problem, and I don't think it's nothing serious to worry about. But uh, let's see. I'm going back to you at the studio, and we are going to see the next time we talk, we are going to have a better result, a better idea, the way it's going to go tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos, for all the first-hand information on this crucial event. We will keep in contact for sure. We were listening to Carlos Montero, Telesusa Special Envoy to Washington, and also to offer more context on this key event, we invite to our studio in Caracas, Venezuela, professor and political analyst, Danny Shaw, former professor at the City University of New York, who was fired for defending the Palestinian cause. Danny is going to be joining us through the upcoming days, following and analyzing all the news coming from U.S. elections. Hi, Danny, and welcome. Good evening, Alejandra, and to everybody who's uh, joining us. Today, the U.S. National Intelligence report in a joint statement with the FBI and other security agencies that foreign adversaries, referring, of course, to Russia, are trying to undermine today's elections. There were several bomb threats in key states such as Georgia. Do you think this is a tactic? to the voters for, in order to the voters to feel unsafe? Or is this just part of the rhetoric to blame foreign powers of this electoral outcome if it's not the one that they are expecting? Yeah, I think it's the former, uh, Alejandra. I think this is uh, one of the predictable FBI, CIA uh, stories that they plant. Uh, if in yesteryear the unofficial religion of the United States uh, ruling class was anti-Soviet and anti-socialism, and that continues to be true today, uh, but it's also anti-Russia. So there's Russia-phobia, and um, Trump is saying that if he's not the winner, uh, surely the Democrats were the cheaters. And uh, the Democrats act like they're innocent, but they're the ones saying that if Trump wins, surely it was a Russian plot. Uh, so whoever wins today, the other side is going to cry foul, and no matter who wins, uh, really, the American people are losing, and the American people, it's incumbent upon them uh, to continue to fight, because we know the Russian people, uh, the Venezuelan people, the Chinese people, we know who our enemy is. Our enemy is on Wall Street. Our enemy is in uh, Washington, D.C. So it's not uncommon that this uh, Ro Russia phobia uh, reels its ugly head. Unfortunately, large sectors of the American people specifically those influenced by the New York Times, CNN, and the other liberal mouthpieces have fallen for this uh, Russia-phobic uh, trout. Also, Haiti has been in the spotlight of these U.S. general elections. There have been false claims regarding immigrants hating immigrants, stealing and eating pets in Springfield. There's also f un unfounded claims that thousands of Haitians are illegally registering and voting for Democrat Kamala Harris with Democrats' complicity. Why? Why is Haiti in this, has become a hot spot, a hot topic in this? It's occupied, it's the most exploited, but uh, it has incredible resources, gold, uh, iridium, all types of uh, rare uh, minerals. So we should understand uh, why the U.S., whether it's the Democrats or the Republicans, have always had uh, this type of uh, attitude and racism towards Haiti, um, this nation of 12 million people, about 3 million more in the diaspora. Uh, Trump's rhetoric has been a racist, xenophobic rhetoric uh, against the Haitian people. And I think we should freeze this moment from last month uh, at the debates where Trump said these wildly uh, xenophobic, racist, scapegoating things about hundreds of thousands of immigrants streaming across the border, being a threat to eat people's pets. They had all these, uh, this propaganda coming from Springfield, uh, Ohio, from the uh, Haitian community. And Kamala Harris stood there looking on, uh, pretending to be uh, so offended, and how could Trump say such racist things? And at the same time, simultaneously, it's Kamala Harris and Joe Biden who are occupying and invading Haiti, 
uh, for the fourth time in 100 years. There's already 400 Kenyan troops that have occupied Haiti, with many more uh, on the way, as well as 200 um, troops from the Bahamas, from Jamaica, from uh, Guyana. So it's interesting how, in this case, you have the wolf, the openly racist and anti-Haitian Trump, but then you have the uh, wolf in sheep's clothing, or the fox, Kamala, who pretends to have this liberal moral outrage, but in fact she's the one carrying out uh, this occupation with her boss, uh, Biden. So if Kamala Harris wins, it doesn't represent any reprieve for Haiti or the Haitian people uh, who are firmly against another occupation uh, of their land. And it's important to say, too, that how many hundreds of thousands of U.S. weapons have leaked into Haiti. So this is a very difficult time for the Haitian people. The eyes of the world are upon the U.S., following closely every detail that comes from this country. Why is the U.S. elections not just a key moment for U.S. society, but also for the rest of the international community, and especially Latin America? Well, let's start within the U.S., and then we can expand to the international realm. Uh, for us uh, Americans, according to the polls and according to the people who we talk to uh, every day across the country, some of the most important issues are immigration, of course, the economy. Uh, they have uh, created this whole cultural divide along the lines of abortion and women's uh, reproductive uh, rights. So it depends where you go in the country, what perspective you are going to hear. Uh, certainly, and also uh, for the liberal side of the equation, uh, many liberal voters are saying that their most important issue is the quote-unquote state of democracy, which assumes that we already have uh, democracy. Voting once every four years for our oppressors and our genocide theirs, that is the committers of genocide, is not real participatory democracy. In fact, it's just a facade of democracy. In the international realm, I think the most controversial uh, issue if Trump wins, he's promising to end this U.S. NATO war uh, on Russia after two and a half uh, cruel years for the Ukrainian people, uh, trapped in between uh, the geopolitical strategic interests of U.S. imperialism, and then the Russians, who have a right to defend themselves against the ever-encroaching uh, NATO uh, on their borders. Uh, we should now pivot our attention, of course, towards the number one pivotal issue in the world, the ongoing 13-month and really 76-year genocide uh, against the Palestinian people, uh, the ongoing bombing and invasion of another sovereign country, uh, Lebanon, where more than 3,000 people have now been killed. Roughly one-third of all of the Lebanese have now been displaced. These are horrific, almost unprecedented uh, war crimes. And Kamala Harris represents continuity. Trump, on some uh, level represents a monkey wrench to the system, though we shouldn't have uh, any illusions. Uh, but Trump might just suddenly disagree with continuing to fund uh, NATO or fund Zionism. Zionism has received some 400 to 500 billion uh, dollars since the West and imperialism first called it into existence in 1948. Uh, in terms of the Americas, uh, Alejandra, Kamala Harris was uh, tasked about four years ago as being the economic czar to Central America. Of course, nothing, absolutely nothing ever came of that. I asked the audience, what has Kamala Harris as vice president ever really done uh, for the American people? So much of her campaign is based on fear-mongering and um, saying that Trump represents this existential uh, threat to a non-existent uh, democracy. Uh, certainly from the perspective of Latinos within the U.S., they're in their most part, besides Florida, the Florida exception because of the Cuban-American and Venezuelan-American vote, which is a very anti-Bolivarian, anti-socialist vote, overwhelmingly Latinos are going to be with Kamala because they're thinking about their families and the possibility of their families leaving uh, an exploited country to try to chase the very resources and capital that was uh, stolen from their homelands. Thank you. Thank you, Dani, for all the information, all the analysis, and we will keep talking and discussing in the upcoming days all about all the details coming from these U.S. general elections. Thank you, Alejandra. We were talking to our special guest, Dani Shaw.